Okay, ready? Yep. One, two, three. That's good. Hi, Jenny. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. What have you had it with? I have had it with the continued idiocy of people that see the sign on the front door of my office <laughs> and continue to walk into suite two looking for other suites. I'm really anxious to greet one of the people at the door and say, step outside here. I want to ask you a question. Did you read the sign? And tell me what what was the thought process in deciding to read it and despite reading it to march right on in. I need to know, help me understand what I can put on this door to have prevented you to walk in. How about we don't give directions? Okay. We don't give advice. Okay. Come in at your appointment. And if you don't have one of those two, we will call the police. What if you put, come through this door and I will blow your head off? I mean, it is Oklahoma. It could happen. Yeah. I mean, Javi could be packing heat behind that desk and just take pick people off. Oh, I mean, that's, I don't want to go that hard. homicidal. I appreciate, okay. I, I like right. the intensity. Right. Because sometimes I feel homicidal, but right. I don't know when you say that out loud, I think I realize how insane I am. Right. But nonetheless, I'm going to work on it. What have you had it with this week? Okay. What I've had it with, you know, I'm a new Instagram person. What I've had it with is all these advertisements right that are on your your feed so like i bought into it right off the bat oh yeah oh yeah emily was like you're a rookie i can't believe you did that but so i i get excited about these bras because what i hate about leisure bras is the pads come out right and when you wash them you have to put the pads back, back in. in it's just a hassle right so this bra, I mean, it just looked like this will be heaven on earth. This is what you've been waiting for your whole life. Right. So I order it and I'm spoiled because we live in a town where Amazon lives. Right. So we get stuff same day sometimes. Right. This fucker, it was like four weeks on this bra. Before it came. Before it came. Like, oh, Instagram, it's, it's a big racket. It came from racket. like 55 countries away for yeah. this bra. Okay. Yeah. So I'm excited about the bra, even though it took me a year to get it. Okay. I'm still fired up okay. about it. Well, so I wash it. That fucker, not only did the pads come out, one pad went into the other side of the bra. So now both pads are in one side of the bra and I couldn't get it out and I had to throw it away. After one wash. How was it, the the fit prior to the wash? You know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. I probably should have gotten an extra large instead of just a large. But I didn't put that on the Instagram advertisement. I just put that on your boobs are bigger than you want to admit to yourself. Right. So that wasn't so bad. But I just... Emily made fun of me. Now you're making fun of me. Like you cannot buy shit off you Instagram. You cannot. I I fall. I fell for it a few times. I bought some pajamas that look so cute on the model. I was like, these are going to be great. They right. come in there, awful, horrible, sandpaper, fucking not soft at all. Uh -uh. Sandpaper. The fabric was wretched. Complete total scam racket. Yeah, it was total a scam. And I think I pay like. $12 for a leisure bra at like a Walmart or Target or Amazon or something. Right. And it was, this was like $35, which I yeah. was happy to pay. Right. If I thought I didn't have to put the pads back in after the washing machine. Right. But one pad migrated. Right. It was horrible. It was worse <laughs> than any of it the other It was a bras. migrating. Migrating. So you had move. like double protection on one sag and dragon and the other one was just free balling. Bare nipple and bare nipple. Like your ass on a toilet. <laughs> like my ass on a toilet. <laughs> Welcome to I've Had It Podcast. I'm Jennifer. I'm Angie. Jen and Neely are with us. Richard is here. And it is time, listener, it is time to drag out a dead horse and beat the shit out of it. And listener, <laughs> I want you to understand that for 20 years, Pumps and I never tire of talking about certain things. And we call it a dead horse right. session. And right now, we are about to have our very first dead horse session on I've Had It Podcast. Yes, it's And the dead horse that we're dragging out today, that horse's name is Burning Man. Yep. Since we recorded our Burning Man episode, Neely and Jen went right. to Burning Man, as you and I know. Mm -hmm. What the audience doesn't know is this fantastic... I mean, amazing podcast would have started 
about maybe six to eight weeks earlier. Right. Than it did. But these two producers, when you get back, apparently it's like a 120 day cleaning process to get the dust, not only out of every orifice of your body, right? Your bags, your clothes, all the shit they schlepped to burning. Like their U haul full of shit. I remember when we called them, we gave them like four or five days after Burning Man because we're like, they're outside, there's no plumbing, they're probably tired, you know, obviously. We get them on FaceTime and we both hung up and we were like, they look like they have been dragged behind a car. They looked for awful. a year. I mean, honest oh. to God, we I, thought you were dying. Oh. We They're immediately so talked. I mean, we were just like, terrible. they looked the? horrible. We Not, had a follow up phone call. She yes. called me. She could, can you believe how bad they look? <laughs> but I'm telling you, uh, you could have gone down the road behind an 18 wheeler for three days and looked better. What? You could. You could have been the poster what? child for PTSD. Yes. I'm it serious. Was bad. It could have been it could have been Google Siri, show me what PTSD looks like. And you two on the FaceTime screen could have popped up. And then like I mean, then I think we talked to him a few days after that and it was like, God, they're still got that burning man. And they still had that shit packed up and they're like going box to box cleaning shit. I, I would have to assume that you found sand in places that were never meant to have sand in them we still have sand in a lot of places see ladies how was burning man how was it on a scale of zero to ten how was your burning man experience i'm gonna give it a nine okay because the weather was terrible i mean it it was really hot and we had dust storms so you weren't like in afghanistan or something (laughs) it was basically but i will say the rest of it was amazing. It's some of the most like creative people I've ever seen. The the nights are the best. You just ride your bikes around and like look at all the different art installations and the art cars and like you would be so hot and then you would see this big like car art car come by and they would be making like fresh juice just to pass out to people for free. Or like one time it was a margarita. I don't know if y'all have ever been to Mexico, but you can be on the beach and then the waiters come by and they just pass out stuff right to you. There's no dust storm. So like we, we stayed up one, one night, um, to watch this, uh, DJ that we both love and it was the sunrise set and we were getting hungry and this guy passed by and he had fresh pancakes and he was just passing it all around and we're like, this is a godsend. Playa provides. Okay, so you won't sit on a toilet seat, you hover, but you'll eat a pancake from a total stranger with the dust bowl? Yeah. Yes. I need to know, did you shit or piss in the bucket? Neither of us pooped in the bucket. Neither okay. of us. We did pee in it in the middle of the night. One one morning, I wake up. I smoked to a, her out. To a horrible, horrible smell. I was dehydrated. Dehydrated. I had to jump out of the tent Wait. because it was disgusting if this isn't alarming enough Mm -hmm. i think we have to bring our good friend bob the builder back we have another friend of theirs that was in their camp and his name is omid and so i actually got to facetime with omid while they were on their way back from burning man and i heard probably one of the more alarming stories that i've ever heard in my entire life worse than the p i've kept it under lock and key because i want to sit back and watch your reaction live as he tells you what he told me. So without further ado, okay. let's get, I'm, I'm kind of scared. Let's get their playmates, the Burning Man playmates in. Let's get T Bob it up. Pumps. Pumps, are you excited to see Bob? Are you excited again? to I mean, see I can't Bob? Wait. He's precious. He is precious. Isn't he? If but I don't I say you're trying to hit on him. It doesn't matter. Who cares? <gasps> Hi, Bob the Builder. Bob. Oh, hey, hey. How oh are gosh. you? Oh my gosh, Omid! I'm hi, Omid. Hi, Bob. It's so good to see you guys. Okay, so I have to say, Bob, after we did that episode with you, we just full blown changed your name to Bob, Bob the Builder. So if we start calling you Bob, it's just you are Bob in our world. That's fine. And I apologize, but that's just who you are. But we've got to get right to the nut cutting here. Okay, I know that since we did. Our Burning Man episode. You guys have gone. I've heard some rather alarming stories, but Omid, you may remember that I FaceTimed with you when you were in the Jeep with <laughs> Jen and Neely on your way back. And you told yep. me a story that was incredibly eyebrow raising to say the least. 
<laughs> and I'm going to sit here with my eyes fixated on pumps. And I want you to tell her about the tattoo parlor at the Burning Man. All right. So this was me getting a temporary tattoo at Burning Man. Um, it's at a gay camp called Celestial Bodies, which is our favorite place to hang out at Burning Man. They have the best cocktails. But on Tuesdays, they give temporary tattoos. So you, there's a very sexy man with a big beard that's seated. And you stand in front of him and you tell him where you want your tattoo. And I picked my butt. It's really fun. Um, but he first starts with prepping the area by exfoliating it with his beard. So he <laughs> rubs his beard all, all over your butt. And then he puts the temporary tattoo on. But while he's applying the pressure so that you don't tip over, he cups you, your uh -uh. junk. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he holds on to you while the temporary tattoo is going on. And then afterwards, to seal the tattoo, he takes a puff of his vape pen and then blows it very gently all over your butt area just to kind of seal it all in. I think that that might be assault. <laughs> okay, yeah. what's the deal with the – with his – he grabs your junk. So that you don't tip over because he has to apply pressure to your – to the tattoo. Right. And you might tip over unless he was cupping your junk the whole time simultaneously. Could you bend over a chair? <laughs> You could. It's not as fun. Yeah. Bob, did you get any sort of um, tattoos or ass crack beard exfoliation when you were at the Burning Man? I did not this year, no, but I have in previous years. Have you given any exfoliation with the beard at Burning Man? Hmm. I know, but I do do a lot of beard rubs with other good bearded guys. We like to get together and just Stop. nestle in. What's a beard rub? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just two guys. And it's, you know, it's like, you know, like an Eskimo kiss where you're like, touching right? noses. Yeah. It's like that one with a beard. You're just kind of like rubbing your beard together. Every good bearded man loves another good bearded man. It doesn't matter your sexual preference. We just love it. Like, oh, me, he's got a beautiful beard. I always touch his beard every time I see him. Oh, yeah, wow. he does have a good looking yeah, beard. Does. I mean, you do. Thank he you. Does. Thank I, you. And I like the specs. Those are nice looking specs. Kind of has a, Josh Welch would really like him. That haircut's nice. Right. It has, he, you have some natural <laughs> curl, right? Yeah. Lots yeah. of it. Yeah. Her husband. I have questions. Okay. Oh, ask. Go fire away. Wait, your husband would like a curly headed guy? Yes. He appreciates, he's incredibly vain. He wouldn't like you sexually. Okay. He would appreciate your aesthetic and your sense of style. And he'd think you were attractive. Okay. He would say, that don't mean it's a good looking guy. I liked his specs. I liked his hair. I liked his beard. I mean, he, he, he is comfortable enough in his sexuality to tell you that he, that he likes your look. You should bring him to Burning Man. Oh, I would God. rather paint the interior walls <laughs> of my entire office building with a Q-tip, base coat, first coat, top coat, then a sealer, then go to Burning Man. But listen, I'm all swing for the fences. If y'all like it, I want to know every nutty yeah. detail. Right. I want to get to the deep, dark bottom, inject this shit into my veins. What other crazy shit did you do? Okay, I had a question that I didn't ask last time, Bobbitt. So in the orgy tent, <laughs> do you consent, like, do you fill out, like, before you go in, are you like, hey, I'm all the way, I'm, I'm going all the way, I'm doing three ways, butt play, all of it? Or is it like consent is just like, a little bit at a time? Consent with who? Like, like the other like, orgy members. <laughs> Like is there no, it, it's like a little bit of time. It's not like what middle schooler did with those colored bands on their wrist, you know? <laughs> okay. It's it, it's in the moment someone asks, you say yes or no. There's an orgy dome and then there is Oh shut uh, the fuck up. An orgy dome? Dome. It's called the orgy dome. Oh, They're my wi God. wildly popular. Well, yeah. of course. I could imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I actually went into the orgy dome oh, out of curiosity. Every detail. Go. So, sure, on. you're just looking at the pictures in Playboy too. So, Playboy. Playgirl. Playgirl. Okay. Playgirl. Girl. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I was with two female friends, and you have to be either a couple or a moursome to get into the orgy. Dome. Stop. What's a moursome? Stop. Is a moursome a more like a thruple? A moursome is more than a couple. So, yeah, a throuple or maybe you're in a polyamorous relationship with four people. But you have to be more than a single person. Right. Specifically, I think that they're trying to make sure that single guys don't wander in there and just, right. like, lurk. 
I think the only rule in there is consent. So you can't yeah, like, you know, obviously. Um, and then the other thing and the thing that we got kicked out of there for was they don't really like lurkers. They don't really like observers. Watchers. We were just a little stunned and just sitting on the couch and I was with two friends. Who's the oversight in this? Who who kicked you out? Who's the mm. who's the dome sheriff? The orgy dome is an actual Burning Man camp. And here's the kicker. My accountant belongs to that camp. <laughs> Shut <laughs> the fuck up. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Did you know he that was part of that camp? Or did you see him? Counter I, I didn't know then. Okay, so Bob, Bob, tell us about what you built. Oh, uh, This year, we, uh, Son and I helped build like the kitchen. We built like a, a sink that had somewhat of a success. Uh, at a shower that also had somewhat of a success, <laughs> growing pains. And then the rest of it was like building camp structures and stuff with the rest of the team. And we all pitched in for that stuff. Bob, I, did you enjoy the um, dust storm? I actually, I loved it. Yeah. It was like one of my favorite moments was like 24 hours of pure wind and dust. Because it was great. You, the entire camp came together to secure stuff, hold things, and then my wife Sana is running around with like a gigantic handle of uh, fireball, making everybody take shots. So you're just getting drunk, laughing with all your friends. It's the best time possible. We did see a picture of you, Bob, in we the did. camp. Which one? Well, you were. We, when we I say I face out on the ground, like yes, that. face yes. down, eating dirt. You look destroyed. <laughs> right. I mean, it, you looked absolutely <laughs> annihilated. For my birthday this year, which is like a month after the burn, my wife had that framed and is now hanging in our kitchen. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love yes. it. Were you exhausted when you got back? It still took another two months for me to start feeling really normal at work again. Okay. Yep. I just I constantly want to wanted to call and that. quit. That's what I want to tap into right there because Jen and Neely, we <laughs> FaceTime them and it is like fucking zombie apocalypse. <laughs> right. They were the poster child of PTSD. It was so alarming that after the FaceTime, Pumps immediately called me and she said, God, can you believe how terrible they look? I was like, so I thought we're just finding out about so them. I've never seen anything like it. No, I mean, it's like they ate. It's like you've seen those age progressions like for meth ads. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly what it was, like 10 years of meth in one week. Let me ask you this. Are you going next year? Bob, you go first. No. Uh, oh, plot I don't think twist. we can. Plot twist, uh, because my wife is now pregnant. Oh, and we're yay! doing June. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. So, Come on, Bobbitt. Bring, bring no, the baby. No, no, I just, honestly, it's going to be my greatest success is being a dad. I already know it. Oh, I'm ready to buy those, those classic white New Balances and crappy t-shirts. I'm so ready. You're going to crush I've got it, jokes Bob. lined we up. Have, we have a, uh, I've had it podcast onesie that we're going to send your baby. Yes, it Ooh. says yes. Oh. Not invited to the pool party. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> For me, like I don't end up looking like a zombie four days after. I'm actually the freshest, the happiest <laughs> that you're going to get me all year long, and you get like a month and a half of it where I'm just like glowing and excited about life again. And then when work fully sucks me back in, you just see, well, that's when I turn into a depressed zombie. <laughs> For me, it's like it's. That's where I open up and I have finally allow myself to be who I fully am. And like, I have zero fears about who I am and controlling myself because I have to act and be a certain way in society. I can just be myself and everyone I'm there with, Jen, Millie, Omi, all of our camp, they make sure that I am that person when I leave. They're there. They're my community. This year was huge for me. I actually didn't even see a lot of the city or a lot of the art because I was always at camp with all, all of my friends. That's all I cared about was being back with my community. And it made me feel whole again. And it made me feel excited to just get back into life and to do things. I hadn't had it in three years and I needed it. I, I needed it every year. Up over that. That's really that's sweet. Really I mean, that's kind of touching, Bob. It really is. Oh, me? <laughs> what do you love? Well, he Bob? likes the orgy too. Uh, so as I've been eight years now, I always say it restores my faith in humanity. I see people at their best. Um, you know, I think that you guys, I specifically, I think Jennifer would really enjoy Burning Man. <laughs> uh, my point being that there, you, when you interact with someone, you're probably not going to be your most unguarded sort of self. Mm -hmm. Every year, it takes me 48 hours to, for my shoulders to come down at Burning Man. So I thought that it was only going to be the first year when it happened, but it happens every year. And I think it's because 
you have to have some sort of a shield on in the in, in the outside world because it's just not safe. People just have all kinds of extent, you know, intentions, and you don't want to be a naive person just sort of whistling your way through, you know, dodgy parts of the world. But at Burning Man, it really it feels so kind and right. so safe. Right. And and everyone's lovely. I always say it's the best place to have an emergency because people <laughs> will help you, but also right. like literally go completely out of their way to get you whatever you need. Not that you should rely on them, but you know, if you needed them, they would be there. It's the best kind of person that goes there. It, it is a lot of work, yeah. prepping, cleaning up afterwards. You come back completely depleted. I don't know. This year was really, really hard for a whole host of reasons. If I was betting right now, I would say probably go back, but I don't know. You know. Millie and Jen, are you going to go? Yes. You are going to go next year? <laughs> you hope to. Sana! <laughs> Congratulations! Congratulations Sana! on your baby. Sana had to check out the competition. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm very impressed with your husband and all his industriousness. Really I mean, it's shocking how somebody can do that. At what age will you take the child to Burning Man? Right. I think six or seven, six, six or seven. seven would be a good age. I wouldn't take him any earlier. You see little babies right. out there sometimes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's just terrible. They're little lungs. Yes. Like, it's a giant playground. So it is an amazing amazing place for a kid i don't even want to take a baby to target so right. i damn sure right. wouldn't want to take a baby <laughs> to camp man. for eight days let's do a lightning round did you guys cuddle puddle this year yes or no sana you go first no i did not cuddle puddle i'm not a big fan of cuddle puddles i agree i, I like her. it bob <laughs> yes <laughs> had it i've had it with bob i mean i heard your last episode about Bob, it was talking. You, were you talking about Pink Heart, the biggest cuddle puddle on the playa? I actually climbed into that room. What and do you mean it, climbed? There's I, not a door. So the room, where, <laughs> What's going on with the climbing? Yeah. So Bob, it looked at the room and was like, "Nope," and turned around. I was like, "Yes," <laughs> and I took my shoes off and went in. <laughs> and and you have to so that it's just like a mess of. Uh, pillows and teddy bears and people and you can't just walk in you have to crawl in and you can't you have to be (laughs) you have to be mindful of your elbows and your knees because it's like people underneath you so it's interesting to just climb your way through and it smells like a thousand farts in there but that's what i was getting to ask like how bad does it smell (laughs) Oh it doesn't God. smell great. There's real grit at Burning Man, and I would yeah. say the smell in the Pink Heart Cuddle Puddle Room is one of them. Yeah. What about BO? <laughs> it's um, no BO. Uh, no BO. I mean, I ha- smell more BO at the local gay bar in Silver Lake than I ha- ever have at Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> true. Yeah. That is true. Jen, yeah. did you go to a Cuddle true. Puddle? No, I did not. Good for you, Nilly. We didn't go to a cuddle puddle. Okay, puddle. good. All right. Okay, did you shit in a bucket? You guys went down a really dark rabbit hole on the whole shitting <laughs> in the bucket. I can't imagine anyone shitting in their tent in a bucket. Yeah, no. Well, you, you know, know what? We just found out oh God, a we couple go. of weeks ago. Pumps, when she's at a public toilet, most women hover. You know, you squat and hover and kind of get a good little. She barebacks it. <laughs> In the public toilet. She just goes right in and sits down on a bareback. So you I sit. I would never bareback a toilet seat ever, ever, ever. Never. Thank you. Never. I would never, never ba- bareback a public toilet seat ever. So I had to get over the Burning Man porta potties the first time I went because mm-hmm. I had a legitimate fear. But the same playa dust that sort of settles BO kind of calms down the situation in the porta potty so it isn't as horrible <laughs> as you would imagine so i will bear back a public Oof. toilet but i will not go in a porta potty i will stand next to it and shit on the ground before i will <laughs> <laughs> i would i cannot those are gross yeah they're disgusting they're horrible <laughs> they horrible i have peed behind like at football games back in the day they'd have porta potties set up and people would be in line i'd just go right behind it and pee you, are you jealous that, that, that Bobbitt's having a baby? No, I'm thrilled. They're going to be great parents. Think of all the shit he's getting. Uh-huh. Think about his treehouse. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It will be like next level treehouse. 
Yeah, that yeah would be Bob amazing. here is going to build a tree house for him. <laughs> I love that. Well, yeah. congratulations again. That's amazing. All right. Anything else dicey that went down? I don't know. I want the good shit. Anything else go down in Burning Man that we need to air out? Jennifer, I feel like we need to, I need to tell you mm-hmm. some, some, some things that might entice you to maybe one day consider going to Burning Man. Lay it like on. imagine, imagine you're, it's morning and okay. you're, you're riding your bike okay. and the electric bike. So you don't have to work really hard. I like and all that of a sudden, exercise. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Plot to us. Uh, but <laughs> there's, imagine there's a sign that says breakfast martinis and you just stop and you go in and all of a sudden it's the crap like the most like a craft cocktail shaken served in like a chilled glass right and all of a sudden you're having the perfect martini where five like two minutes ago you didn't even know you were gonna have here's let me tell you the flaw breakfast cocktail. let me tell you the flaw on that story <laughs> I don't drink alcohol but because my husband's a recovering drug addict and alcoholic that's been to rehab five times. And so after the fifth rehab stint, I thought, well, fuck it. I'll just quit drinking too. <laughs> so I'm already oh, out shit. on the Burning Man martini bar that crashed and burned. What else you got for me? Okay. So you're, you're riding your bike. Riding my you're, bike. You're, okay. Let's go back to the get bike. It, riding it, my get bike. It, I'm get getting it. great cardio. All of a sudden you smell hot. Chocolate chip cookies, okay, like I love freshly chocolate baked. Chip cookies. Mm-hmm. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. And you realize that there's a tray, like there's a person with a tray of hot cookies, and all you have to do to get one is to get paddled on your behind. What? With like a <laughs> leather. Oh with, yeah. Like S and M. Yeah. Yeah. For Shut a cookie? Up, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's gonna have to be a lot more than a cookie. So you have to get spanked to get the cookie. Have you guys not ever stayed in a fucking five star hotel? You literally all you do is pick up the phone and say, "Could you please bring some chocolate chip cookies to room four hundred two? And they say, "It's my pleasure." And Mrs. then a Welch. dominatrix. And then they bring them. You don't have to get spanked. You don't have to ride a bike. It just happens. But, it, but you can get a dominatrix at a five star hotel too. And some guy was gonna spank you for a grilled cheese sandwich. It was nice. It was worth it. I have. <laughs> Y'all are getting spanked to get food. food. Yeah. This is what's yeah. another thing that's going on at Burning Man is you have to get a whooping. This whole podcast is based on you guys, you know, loving playful interactions with other human beings and each other. Maybe that's all should. Burning Man is. It's like it's one eight, it's eight days of just ridiculous, playful interactions. And sometimes like it's just really dumb. Like you get spanked and you get a chocolate chip cookie. How long yeah. did it take you to get out? Yeah, that's a great question. Six Ooh. hours. Oh my god! I mean, that's just torture. It wasn't that bad? It took, I mean, you're going to yeah. deliver a Slide baby burn. in less time than it took you to get out of Burning Man. That's a great point. <laughs> Is that a promise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, like, I, I don't want to even do something that feels good for six hours. Right. Uh, right. Like no, six hours no. is too long. We fun. had really fun, though. Yeah. We had fun in the exit. We had fun. I can't decide if this whole Burning Man thing is like shared psychosis or if I am just a horrible candidate for it. I think we're horrible candidates because I kind of teared up when Bob was talking about why he liked it. Like the community aspect of I it. I didn't really feel that much. I did. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I think it's sweet that that's your reality, but it didn't move the right. meter. No, it doesn't make me want to go. I found that people yeah, I mean, that questions. resisted the most are the ones that needed the most. Like that would get probably, the most. That's out probably of it. 100% There's true. There's no question that I am stage five fucked up, cynical, right. negative. <clears throat> that it could probably open me up and I could be a kinder, gentler person. The problem is, I would have to have a lot of interactions with human beings and i don't really like human but beings. maybe you would have to i like humanity man. but like if there was a dog burning man where we could go hang out with dogs i'm in you don't have to interact with people if you don't want to you could be like i don't want to and just do you but i feel like you would open up like a beautiful little there's just still so many fundamental <laughs> things that Burning Man is lacking for me to be a good candidate. And I just think I, I'm, about I'm all the open sand to going in like a rehab for a while and working on little Jennifer and writing letters to little Jennifer in my non-dominant <laughs> hand and getting in touch with my inner child. I'm open to all that shit. I'd cuddle a teddy bear. I'd do all this shit in Malibu where right. normal people go to get in touch with their feelings. I don't want to go to the desert and be in a dust storm with goggles. I think, I think you guys would be so that. funny. You guys would be so fun out there because there's so much to laugh at. 
I think you would just have a ball. You would scream from laughter every day. But then because... I'd get sand in my mouth. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. right. If I scream with laughter. It's a, it's a I... minefield. It's a minefield right. it's like potential it's everything issues. A good and a bad. Yeah. No, my Middle Eastern body has no issue with the dust. I rarely even need to cover my nose and mouth. Really? You know, unless there's like a severe dust storm, but you know, it's so windy Iran, in Oklahoma so. City. My eyes are like swollen after just being like walking from my car into the office. Can you imagine? Well, I is there, I, I'm so happy that you all made it out, and it looks like we're not going to have potentially repeat visits in except this for the calendar two. year. Except for you two are going for sure, Nelly and Jen. We hope to. Omid's going to go too. What would you Jen, do? Jen, <laughs> peer pressure. Jen took to it. Like I have never seen, like Jen took to it. Like you wouldn't believe. You know, it's about having a sense, like a, her sense of adventure, I think is so big that she just was like this. I, I, I've come home, you know, to the, to the place where I can just have that infinity. Like I Jen just that. having fun. Well, do you think, has this moved the needle for you at all, Pumps? Do you think you would go to Burning Man? No. Hard pass. No. I don't like group activities. <laughs> I don't want to do any of those things. So, I yeah. love the Amalfi Coast. Love it. Absolutely. Do you think you it. can pamper yourself in luxury while at Burning Man? Like, just no. set yourself up really nicely? Here's the deal. I, when I want to be pampered, I don't want to do that for myself. Mm. What I consider being pampered is having services provided for me by others. Do you know what I mean? Well, you could get a spanking and a grilled cheese. Yeah. I just I just would hate for you not to even try it once, you know. I know. I know. I know. Just once. Just I, once try it. I would have a lot of hostage demands. I mean, like it would be like I, I would have a huge demand list. Who's the recipient of this list? Well, y'all are the ones campaigning for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it sounds like you all are going to be campaigning the needs. I don't want to go. Y'all are the ones that want me to go. So, I mean, I'll just provide the list. It's going to be you three, you five motherfuckers. You figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> figure it out. The needle has not moved. It is my absolute worst possible case scenario is burning me. <laughs> Like if you want to tour your very own Guantanamo. We just launched our merch page. And guess what one of the shirts is that we're selling? Boycott Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be condescending. Are we condescending? I don't really. I, we're, we're, I mean, we have a podcast called I've Had It. I think okay. we're way past being condescending Okay, at this that's point. probably yeah. true. Are, are there others out there like us that are? There's, Well, there's 340 million people in the world and only 70,000 get a Burning don't Man. Like burning Man creativity. haters. Yeah, yeah. we are hate there, fun. Other... I have been that person. Like, I, I think it's normal at one point during the week to be like, what am I doing here? Yes. I mean, you know? really, he's campaigning. He's, he's on no, the public I'm, I'm relations tour. <laughs> no. I, I, <laughs> but yeah. I want to thank you all so much. Thank for, you. Listen, I know we're cynical and I know we're burning you in haters, but we do love people and we do love Jen and Neely and that you all have so much fun together on this trip and you make all of these memories. I truly appreciate that. And I do think it's absolutely amazing i would love to travel with you guys simply burning man is just not an option for me personally and i think if no i camping. went you would have incredible you would think to yourself why the fuck did we campaign to bring right. this woman with us i think that would probably that, happen you'd end up hating her it's fine yeah 100 better this way yeah it is better you and, and you would really end up hating her right. she has a party trick that would be she would be a, a oh, million okay, times so worse than I, I would be can hang a hanger off my nipples if i want to <laughs> so that would be my trick for grilled cheeses <laughs> and <laughs> chocolate chip cookies like i would cut that line and be like move back motherfuckers watch this and i'd be the I'd be the queen of the whole thing. She used to be able to balance it with a, a wood hanger on it. Yeah. And now gravity. Yeah. Now she can <laughs> still do just the hanger. Just the basic wire hanger at this point. Yeah. So, oh. you know, probably got about five more years of that. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> The really? nipples are really uh, impressive. Okay. Yeah, they, they are. They are. Thank they you. are. They're impressive they are. nipples. Thank you. They are. I mean, Thank they. You. I mean, it's like a really elongated pencil eraser that you can uh, could actually support something. Right. And now, the death of the podcast. 
the last yeah. thing we ever say <laughs> was about my nipples. About we're so <laughs> desperate, we're dragging out your pony pa- trick. My pony trick, my party yeah. trick. Yeah. All that's to say, thanks for being on today. Well, thank you for being a guest. Definitely. It was so fun. And well, thank you for being open and vulnerable and sharing in a what was probably a hostile environment for you. <laughs> I really appreciate Never. that. And it's not lost on me that you walk into this hostility and the cynicism and you just still own your truth. I love it. I love that you guys are friends with our friends and I hope that we can go to a five star hotel together sometime soon. But not with your baby. Not until he's about ten. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ten. I just don't like babies, no babies. very much. Okay. So I know it's too late for her. She's gonna have to go through it. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, there's no way back now. There's we've no got, way back. We've the got only got way. Cut bait. Okay. Bye. Cut bait. Bye, bye guys. guys. Love Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Bye. That was was that bad? Why was that so bad? I mean, but you're the one that your people baby. want to come to the pool party. It's on a onesie. I want to say to you guys, I absolutely love your friends. They're great. They're awesome. They're they amazing. I'm so glad that you all have these wonderful experiences with them. I want to say to everybody, follow us, like us, pumps. Tell everybody how to find our merch. I've had it dot com. That was wrong. That was <laughs> well, completely redo. wrong. I've that had it podcast dot com. Yes, but you have to do that. Everybody this, No, you have to do it. You have okay. to do it. Okay. www dot I've had it podcast dot com. Bye, everyone. See you next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. I'll tell you what I've had it with. Let's hear it. I've had it with that. I've had it. Had it. Had it. Had it. Had it. Had it.